The first scene introduces us to a man named Milo Stanfield, who is dealing with Autism Spectrum Disorder ASD. He stands on a New Jersey street, observing a woman in a nearby flower shop, while also performing complex calculations related to the timing of events around him. Milo takes note of a bus approaching, a pothole, a street artist, and a speeding cyclist. Using his observations, he strategically places a pen on a mailbox next to the pothole. Shortly after, a taxi runs over the pothole, causing the pen to fall. This catches the attention of the street artist, who goes to pick up the pen. At the same time, the cyclist crashes into the artist, causing him to hit the mailbox and fall onto a nearby fruit stand. Chaos ensues, diverting the attention of everyone on the street, including the bus driver. Unfortunately, the bus driver fails to notice the red traffic light and hits the woman crossing the road, ultimately killing her. It's an ironic situation that shows math can also be dangerous. Milo walks away from the scene, satisfied that his plan went smoothly. The scene then shifts to FBI Special Agent Olivia Dunham, who works in the Fringe Division of Homeland Security, specializing in paranormal phenomena. Olivia returns to work after recovering from a head injury. As she enters the Fringe headquarters, she's greeted by her colleague Charlie, who supervises the team. Meanwhile, the agency's chief, Walternate Bishop, discusses Olivia's return with lab assistant Philip Broyles. Philip expresses concern about integrating an imposter, referred to as faux Livia, into their team. It is revealed that the Olivia in the office is not the real one, but rather a replacement who has been implanted with the original Olivia's memories. Walternate explains that faux Livia is the only one capable of safely traveling between universes, and he wants to understand how she does it. To achieve this, they need to convince her that she belongs in this universe. Philip raises the question of what happens if her new identity fails, to which Walternut replies that she will no longer be needed. Later on, Charlie briefs the team about a series of seemingly random bus accidents that have occurred twice that week, resulting in fatalities. He cautions the team to be careful as they investigate the accident site. When they arrive, the FBI team splits up to search for leads and clues. The investigation is led by another agent named Lincoln Lee, whose face bears burn marks. Charlie examines the victim's body and uses her fingerprints to gather more information. She discovers that the woman's name is Julian Foster. Meanwhile, Olivia interviews the shaken bus driver, who has never experienced any accidents involving birds or animals until now. Agent Lee simultaneously tests for any evidence of environmental factors, but comes up empty-handed. However, he does discover the same ballpoint pen at the crime scene. After questioning eyewitnesses, Olivia approaches Agent Lee and informs him that a local artist had picked up the pen and accidentally caused a collision with a cyclist, leading to a fall into a fruit stand. Upon hearing this, Agent Lee theorizes that the pen is the catalyst behind a series of events that ultimately led to the victim's death. The next day, Agent Lee and Charlie, at the Fringe headquarters, attempt to uncover a connection between two recent bus accidents. Agent Lee spots the same ballpoint pen in a photo from the first accident, further strengthening his belief that someone is orchestrating these incidents. They consult a mathematician named Astrid from the Fringe Agency to discuss the situation. However, Astrid argues that it would be impossible for a human to manipulate events in such a calculated manner. Suddenly, another bus accident occurs, leaving Astrid in disbelief. The FBI agents rush to the scene and discover that the victims are still alive this time. They learn from witnesses that a dog unexpectedly ran across the road, causing the bus to lose control. Olivia notices a similar ballpoint pen rolling on the ground, suggesting that the chain of events is not yet finished. She spots Milo, a suspicious figure, observing from an overhead bridge. Moments later, a man wearing earbuds tries to cross the street, but is struck by an oncoming ambulance. Olivia becomes even more suspicious, thinking that the paramedic intentionally caused the accident. She alerts her team and heads towards Milo. Seeing Olivia's actions, Milo quickly calculates another series of events and pushes a bicycle off the bridge. As a result, a bus changes its course and passes directly under the bridge. Olivia aims her gun at Milo, demanding his surrender, but he jumps off the bridge and lands safely on the bus's roof, narrowly escaping capture. Milo seems to have an uncanny connection with buses. Afterward, 
Milo returns home to find his sister Madeline deeply concerned for his well-being. Madeline reveals that she has been receiving numerous calls from the hospital, but Milo brushes her off. She pleads with him to surrender, stating that he has gone too far. However, Milo anticipates her actions and finishes her sentences, effectively silencing her. Madeline then shows him a small plastic toy horse, a memento from their mother, which unsettles him. Milo walks away, dismissing its relevance. Meanwhile, Agent Lee undergoes a routine skin checkup before entering the burn chamber at the hospital. He instructs Olivia to focus on identifying any commonalities among the three victims. Following his directions, Olivia returns to headquarters and interviews witnesses of the accidents. After thorough investigation, she uncovers ties between the victims and a medical center. All three victims have some connection to this facility. She shares her findings with Charlie, and the two immediately head to the medical center. Upon reaching the destination, Olivia notices that a group of patients is using traditional ballpoint pens because they struggle with digital devices like iPads, which make them feel overwhelmed. Later, they encounter Dr. Levin, the head physician who identifies all three victims of the bus accidents. After briefing them on the victim's situation, Dr. Levin explains that they have been conducting experimental procedures to enhance the intelligence of mentally challenged patients. He presents them with video footage of their patients, where Olivia spots Milo. When she inquires about him, Dr. Levin reveals that Milo is one of their patients who underwent the same groundbreaking drug trial to significantly boost his IQ. Milo was discharged from the hospital under his sister's supervision, but was expected to return to reverse the experimental process. However, he is now unresponsive to their attempts to reach him, and poses a threat by eliminating anyone who tries to control him. Upon learning about Milo's sister, the FBI agents decide to pay her a visit. Unbeknownst to them, Milo closely observes Olivia, analyzing her every movement and predicting her next actions. Later, Charlie and Olivia arrive at Milo's residence, where they are greeted by his sister, Madeline. They question her regarding Milo's whereabouts, but she denies having any knowledge, although it is evident that she is withholding something. The agents inform her about Milo's criminal activities and the danger of allowing him to roam free. While Charlie investigates Milo's room, Olivia opens up about her late sister, illustrating their close bond. This prompts Madeline to confide more information about her brother. She reveals that Milo possesses the extraordinary ability to foresee the outcomes of various events, down to the minutest details, and that only a toy horse, Bullseye, can interrupt his focus. Seeing Bullseye arouses intense excitement in him. Eventually, Olivia convinces Madeline to disclose any relevant details, stressing the importance of public safety and Milo's well-being. Madeline surrenders a note disclosing Milo's current hotel location to Olivia. Subsequently, Olivia and Charlie discuss their strategy with Astrid on apprehending Milo. However, they realize that any plan would be rendered ineffective as he can anticipate their every move. Consequently, they decide to approach the hotel directly, without backup. Though unsure of the potential efficacy of this approach, they trust their expertise. Meanwhile, Milo is in his hotel room peering out the window, envisioning forthcoming scenarios that will unfold in the next few minutes. Due to his predictive abilities, he anticipates Olivia and Charlie's imminent arrival and their pursuit. He calculates that he can lead Olivia into a marked area within a construction site where the air is thin and trap her under a deluge of cement bricks. As predicted, the two FBI agents reach the hotel and find Milo waiting for them on the street. He darts towards the construction site while they give chase. Unaware of the danger of the thin air zone, Olivia dashes through it rather than stopping to equip herself with protective gear. Milo's calculation is actually incorrect. Milo, he didn't anticipate that she would be so unintelligent. Furthermore, she manages to avoid a stack of cement bricks. Olivia almost suffocates due to the lack of oxygen. Fortunately, Charlie arrives just in time and assists her with a breathing device. In the aftermath of these events, Charlie questions Olivia as to why she didn't take a moment to put on a respirator, and she responds by saying she didn't recognize the warning sign. Later, Olivia takes Madeline to the hospital, where Milo is observed interacting with a supercomputer. The doctor explains that the drug that boosts Milo's IQ 
has been in his brain for too long, preventing them from reversing the process. Now Milo's intellect has become so advanced that only machines can comprehend his thoughts. Hearing this news, Madeline enters Milo's room and places her toy horse in front of him, feeling sorrowful. That same evening, Olivia is at home when she has a vision of Peter, her boyfriend from another universe. He informs her that she doesn't belong in this universe. To support his statement, he reminds her how her lack of knowledge about this universe saved her life before. Peter encourages her to try to recall all of her memories and kisses her before vanishing. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, turn on notifications, and leave a like.